Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast, hosted by yours truly, Scott Howell, and the incomparable Bradley Flowers. For agents, by agents, we're here to share real life experiences, tips, and insights related to all aspects of both being an insurance agent and running a successful agency. So sit back, turn up the volume, and let's get down to business. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the first episode of the Insurance Guys podcast. My name is Scott Howell, your fearless host with iProtect Insurance and Financial Services offices located in Athens, Alabama, Huntsville, Florence, and Madison. And I am here today joined by first team All American rivals, five star recruit. He's a great American and an even better insurance agent. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the incomparable Bradley Flowers. How you doing, Bradley? I'm great, Scott. How are you doing today? Man, I am excited. I, I am like a kid on Christmas morning that we're getting to do our first ever Insurance Guys podcast today. Guys. Live on Facebook. Live on Facebook. Guys, this, this has been a long time coming, and you and I have been through a lot to get here. And I just cannot tell you how happy and how honored I am to be here with you today. I'm Appreciate about to start. It, cry- I'm about to start crying. I know, so, I know. Um, guys, you know, I guess before we get started, if you love our podcast, if you like our podcast, or you don't like our podcast, make sure that if you do like it, you subscribe to it and leave a comment for us. Tell us how great we are, or how what what it, what is it you you like to tell me? Tell, tell us how bad we are, man. Yeah, tell it. T- give us a five or give us a one. I believe it's is what five we, or one. It's nothing we, else. There's yeah. no in between, guys. The mission of this podcast: we are here to assist all of you agents out there, regardless of where where you are, regardless of where you are in the country. We are here. Our mission is to help you with your business and help you in sales. Bradley and I, I started my career in 2008 with State Farm. I am now a nationwide principal agent, which kind of at this point in time makes me a hybrid independent because we're, we're kind of transitioning more to the independent platform. And Bradley is Alpha Insurance based out of Sarah Land, Alabama, which is really kind of a suburb of Mobile. Suburb of Mobile, that's yeah. correct. And our mission here, guys, is to help you guys in any way we can. We do not have an ulterior motive. We are not here to try to sell you something or try to get something out of you. We are. We simply came together. Uh, Bradley and I met. We fell in love, and business wise, business wise, obviously. And once we once we started getting to know each other, we kind of decided that we wanted to do a podcast together. And I guess since this is episode one, to kind of go through that process. And I've told people this before. I've said. You know, when we started talking about this, the first thing we talked about was doing it more geared more towards consumers. Mm -hmm. And I think I looked at you and I was like, they could use that as possibly the greatest tool that's ever been invented to help people go to sleep at night. That's because, exactly right. Because there is nothing more boring than insurance. But we would put Zquill out of business. Absolutely. There would be no more Ambien, there would be no more NyQuil, none of that. And so as we kind of talk through it, Bradley and I are big Gary Vaynerchuk guys. We are big uh, Grant Cardone guys. Uh, tr- you know, listen to a lot of their stuff. I have, I have always, Bradley. I don't know if you know this about me or not, and I think you're exactly the same way. I have always been a big self help guy. I'm like Tom Cruise in the movie Cocktail. I always, if you if you find me, I've probably got a self help book uh, somewhere on my my person or right. in, in my truck or listening to a podcast or something. And, you know, I think something that really resonated with me was the the Gary Vaynerchuk 5149. And if you really want to be successful in life and in business Mm -hmm. and in your personal life, help as many people as you can. Yep. And the rest of it seems to kind of fall in place. That's right. If you'll do that. You want a billion dollars, help a billion people. Absolutely. And that's that's really, you know, we're we're out. I love helping new agents. I love helping people. And and that's, that's really... Uh, my why behind this podcast, and that's that's why we're starting this. Absolutely, I think you know as you and I talked through it, I was like, man, let's do a let's do a podcast for agents by agents. And episode one today, we're going to talk a little bit about how Bradley and I got started in the insurance business, 
And we are going to keep it real and may say some things that maybe some people won't like. And if you don't like it, I, I don't know what to tell you to do except don't listen to the podcast. But you're going to get it straight up in this podcast. Yeah. There's no fluff. We're not trying to sell anything. We're not trying to sell a seminar. We're not trying to sell a program. That's right. It's, you know, this is we're doing this out of 1,000% complete love and devotion to the insurance industry. Wouldn't you agree? Ab- absolutely. And I think, I think my purpose for this podcast, my vision of this podcast, is for those agents out there that are either just getting started or... Or maybe they've been in the business for a while and, and they've kind of hit that. It's kind of like being in the gym when you hit these 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 lulls where you, you have a hard time, you know, growing or getting in the gym more. It's it's a way to help them. Um, maybe maybe you don't you maybe maybe all of it won't help you, but maybe there's something you hear in every podcast that you go, you know what? That that could really help me in my business. And I think us being able and having the sheer willpower and intestinal fortitude to intestinal do. fortitude determination to bring in for you guys you agents out there some of the titans in the insurance business and, and we, people outside of the business and and we and we tie it together of how to use that in the business absolutely and i i feel very confident that you and i are going to be able to do that absolutely and um if if this podcast can help one agent out there you know, reach your goals, get to that next plateau, you know, get to where you want to be to, to, to live the life that you want to be both financially and from a freedom perspective of right. having the freedom to do, you know, the things that you want to do, then, then we're, we've been successful. And so that, that's kind of, that's kind of my purpose in this. And, you know, I, I think before we get started, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to share with everybody today how I got started in the insurance business, and it you know some of that's really cool, and some of that's kind of sad. But before we get started, I think it's important to, to for me to say this: if you're going to get in the insurance business, and I meet people every single week that want to sit down or, or stand up and talk to me about how do I get in the insurance business, what do I need to do, or I'm thinking about it, or I'm doing this, but I'm thinking about getting into insurance, guys. Listen to me. If you don't ever listen to anything else I say, I challenge you, each one of you listening to this, if you're just getting in the business or you're about to get in the business, reach out and find a mentor. Reach out and find somebody that can help you make good decisions about your future. Because I know for a 1,000% fact that Bradley Flowers is about to give me an amen, if you make a bad decision, and you work your ass off for one, two, three years uh, with the wrong company, selling the wrong products. It is it is like the game Candyland when you're a kid and you got up about halfway up to the top and you hit one of the shoots and you had to go back to the start. It, it's 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 a real life version of that, That's and right. it freaking sucks. <laughs> and. I think a lot of people do that in the insurance business. They either are selling the wrong vehicle or they're with the wrong company or they've got the wrong agency owner that's not a good fit for them. And, guys, I'm going to tell you something. The The one person that I can remember, I, ha- I don't really remember having any real mentors per se when I got into the business, like when I really started selling insurance. I, I don't feel like I had any mentors, but – I want to give a shout out to this guy because he's like a second father to me. And his name is Ricky Sims from Hamilton, Alabama. And Ricky owns the insurance centers of North Alabama. And he has built a very successful agency. And he is one of the the nicest, kindest. uh, Like I said, he's like a second father to me. And I cannot tell you how many hours I sat down with him. And I laid out for him. I could have gone with any insurance carrier I wanted to go to. I probably got five job offers from Alpha Insurance. I got three from Allstate. I got four from Farmers. I got six from State Farm. Now, let me say this. A lot of the people that I that I interviewed with because of the, where they were and the size of their agency and the, the type of agency they had, they didn't have a spot for me, and that was like rocket fuel for me to get turned down. But having Ricky as a mentor to just – you know, kind of walk through what these choices were before I got started and say, Scott, I really think this is your best. I think this is your best option right now. 
was beyond huge for me. And I don't care if you've got to go two hours away from where you live. If you live in Louisville, Kentucky, and you've got to go to Lexington, Kentucky, to go find a, a really good, kind-hearted person that wants to help you kind of make good decisions, you need to pick up the phone, call, the phone and make that phone call and, and ask them, hey, can I take you to lunch? I'm trying to make a good decision on what I'm going to do here. Right. Because I'm telling you folks, listen to me when I say this, when you screw it up and you spend three, four, five years in the wrong spot and you have to start over, a lot of those people just get out of the industry. Mm-hmm. They I think just there's they, an 80% quit rate in the first two years. Well, there you go. You know, I don't know. I didn't know that figure. Eighty percent. That's roughly. I think that includes the financial sector oh, a little bit, but and that I think, probably shoots that number up quite it, a bit. I think it shoots it up quite a bit. But but there is a there is a large number of people. I mean, I can sit here and name. I could probably name ten people right off bat that I know that got in the business and, and got out because they found the wrong vehicle and the wrong thing to take them where they need to go. The wrong company, wrong agency, wrong mentor. If you're if your brother, sister, uncle, aunt, cousin. Whoever the hell it is, if you're an insurance agent and you're listening to this and you've got one of your family members or close friends that is toying with the idea of getting into the insurance agency, I beg you to let them listen to this episode. If they don't listen to another episode of the Insurance Guys podcast, which they'll be missing out 100%, let them listen to episode one because I am about to spit gold for you people. Johnny, put what whatever the sound is for gold right there but so so we talked about this and i'm going to say it again last time guys listen to me getting into the business go find a mentor somebody that's good somebody who has a kind heart somebody who wants to help you and let them help you kind of walk down this path to make good decisions because if you don't this could end very badly for you. It could end like a freaking plane crash. Don't let that happen. And the I, end. And I'm I th- sorry. I think too, I'll get off. I'll get off no, my. No, I'll get off my, my my podium now. I think too with the the mentor thing too. You know, um, I, I compare a lot of life and a lot of business to golf. Mm-hmm. And when I was playing golf a lot, I, I, anybody that started in golf, have you played golf? I have. Yeah. Um, Right when you start, you'll have 80 people come up to you trying to help you. Right. Because everybody wants to fuel that ego and, and make themselves mm-hmm. think that they're the expert. And what what I've learned in golf and in business and in life is, is to stick to my gut mm-hmm. while also taking advice from mentors. So what right. I mean by that is if something doesn't sound just right, mm-hmm. let it go one in one ear and out the other. I have mentors now that some stuff they tell me I'll take to the bank, but some stuff I'm like, eh. I don't yeah, know about that. Right, right. So, so I think at the same time, I think you know you need to trust you too. Right. While also at the same time, I'm not sure. saying if a mentor is telling you, "Hey, you need to do this heart to heart," that kind right. of thing. But if mentor says, "Oh no, you don't need to do that," and it sounds like they're not too serious about that statement, right? You might need to to take that with a grain of salt. Do you right. agree? I do, but I think part of that is picking somebody that's a good mentor. <laughs> that, that and that's part of it. And, yeah. and so where I want to segue to that is 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 your mentor doesn't have to be somebody you meet with in person. It doesn't even have to be somebody right. that you talk to. It can be a Gary Vaynerchuk, a Tony Robbins, right. a Tim Ferriss, right. uh, uh, Chris Paradiso, or, right. or uh, you know somebody who is a who is a thought leader in mm-hmm. your industry or in business in general. That can be your mentor. Absolutely, and I think it's probably you're probably unable to calculate how many people have never met, talked to, or had any face-to-face interaction with people like Gary Vaynerchuk and mm-hmm. Tony Robbins who have had their lives changed by those people. Right, right. And, and I've noticed one thing, and I don't want to get off the topic no. for too long, but with Gary Vaynerchuk, and I, I, if I ever meet him, I'd love to ask him this question. I have heard people call into the Gary V Show and seen YouTube video of him on the street, and people will literally come up to him and say, you have you have you are one hundred percent why my life changed, mm-hmm. and they will say stories that that are just absolutely heart wrenching, and his ability to not get emotional yeah. in those situations yeah. is really amazing. Mm-hmm. It is because because he doesn't he kind of he kind of just well man I appreciate that and he just kind of if you've noticed that. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I know I've heard him on two or three occasions when people would call into the Gary Vee show and they start telling this story. And I'm like, 
if I was Gary Vaynerchuk right now, I'd be boohooing on the other line. But he he stays like, like a rock. But how much confidence does that give you helping oh. people? And I mean, that's it's got to be unreal. And I, and I have been fortunate enough to meet him one time for about two minutes. And right. I couldn't get any words out. I was just like, well, you uh, signed my book and I want a picture. You know, I can get all the other advice from you from all your content. Right. right. You know, Absolutely. but uh, he, he was a very nice individual and, and, and has obviously helped a lot of people. And, and most of the insurance people who listen to this probably have never heard of him. And the first 30 seconds you hear of his, his content will probably turn you off. Um, mm-hmm. It did for me. The first podcast of his I listened to, I turned it off immediately. It was too up here. It was mm-hmm. too high energy. But um, but I was able to, you know, I encourage you to push past that and still listen because in between all the F-bombs and, and, mm-hmm. and the S-words and the C-words and the F-words, there is a lot of a lot of really, really good advice in there. <laughs> and, and I hope somebody says that about this podcast one day. Absolutely. So, so, guys, why should you believe anything we're saying right now? Who are these jack legs that are just sitting here? Uh, spouting off at the mouth on a podcast. Well, let me let me give you a little background on me. My name is Scott Howell. I am the insurance guy online dot com. You can go to my website and find me there. Get in touch with me. Call me. Email me. Um, grew up in a small town in North Alabama called Hamilton, Alabama. And and I'm just giving you a little background here on me. And then I want Bradley to do the same for himself. But um, graduated from Birmingham Southern College in Birmingham, Alabama. Went in the United States Marine Corps in 1995. Served uh, two years, roughly two years, in London, England with an anti-terrorism security forces group there. And was fortunate to be able, while I was there, to go through boot camp again with the British Royal Marines. I was chosen to go through that, and I made it to the end. So I actually earned my Green Beret uh, with the British Royal Marines uh, in their camp down in south, uh, I guess that's south, uh, west, uh, southwest of the UK down in a place called Lim- Limstrom, I believe is You're the name You're a bad of it. dude, aren't you? No, nah, I don't know about that. But uh, then I was, uh, then I went to Weapons Company 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. I only did one real world mission. I jokingly tell people as part of the 27th Marine Expeditionary Force, I was, uh, part of that group that we we actually fired the president of indonesia in about 1998 we were sitting about two miles off the coast five five hours away from going in my my uh, weapons platoon was going to go in and secure the american embassy there and start taking out americans and uh he resigned i i tell people i think it probably when you when you see the entire 27th marine expeditionary unit off a mile or two off your coast you probably there's probably a little bit of a pucker factor there but um got out of the marine corps in may of 99 bounced around from you know i started out in the publishing business doing sales and publishing and i tell people i was with randall publishing in tuscaloosa uh best sales job i ever had in terms of training and going through the what they call their target marketing program uh, and I think really has a lot to do with my success in the insurance business. And then I got over in the construction business for a while and absolutely hated it, hated every minute of it, put all my eggs in a couple of baskets and ruined me financially. That was in about 2006, six, seven. That happens more often than not in that business, correct? Yeah, yeah it does. Thought that I would be retired now at 40, 45, 46 years old. And the housing bubble burst in 08, and we were real heavy in um, residential housing. And when that happened, it just, uh, it absolutely ruined me financially. And I I, I tell this story because I think it's important as part of my background. I had fought my entire life from the time I was in high school getting in the insurance business. I cannot tell you how many people would say, Scott, with your personality, uh, you really need to think about getting into insurance. And it's kind of like trying to sell somebody life insurance. If right. you try to sell them life insurance too much, they're not going to buy it just right. because. Exactly. And it, that's kind of it. Was kind of reminds me. That's that's the same thing. That that is exactly the same thing. Uh, I didn't think the the that the insurance business was sexy enough for me. I uh, thought it would be very boring. I think that's kind of a attribute that is is kind of commonplace. I, I have a theory on this: the 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 unsexier the business, the more money you make; the sexier the business, the less money you make. True, because I, those fields yeah. are are going to get so flooded and right. so saturated. 
And, and I'm going to tell you this, guys, and, and to the insurance uh, executives out there with all these different, you know, you know, uh, the suits, a message the, for the suits. Yeah, the ivory tower folks and the, the people that are on these committees and boards and insurance, whatever, whatever. You know, our industry does not do a lot to battle that. We, we <laughs> it, you know, we, we do not do a lot to uh, combat the, the boring. Uh, I saw an industry magazine not too long ago talking about how they were having a, a hard time recruiting young talent and millennials into the insurance business and and honestly i was like well no shit you know of course we don't it's not a sexy industry and um it can be though it can be it can be it, but i think you have to develop that, that the mindset that you love 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 the industry well it either has to come from the top right or it has to come from the agent right one of the two right and for me when i was ruined financially in about 2008 I, I finally, it was like getting put in the sleeper hold, and I finally re- re- relinquished, uh, you know, this thought that I wasn't going to get in the insurance business, and I think that happens to a lot of people in the insurance business. I meet a lot of people uh, in an in a episode that we're going to have in the future. We're going to talk about your story and how that story can compel you to great things in the insurance business, but I meet a lot of people that insurance is kind of the last last ditch effort they've tried two or three other things it didn't work out and they use you know they get into the insurance business hoping and thinking that they're gonna you know get be successful in that well well to add up to add a footnote to that when tom brady what tom brady got drafted seventh round have right. you seen that interview where i, I have around said, i thought i was just gonna be an insurance around, agent around, and i love watching that with my friends right. because i know it's coming and i or my family and i always jump up and say what the hell Exactly. And everybody just thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. I, yeah, and I saw that too, and I thought, what the hell, Tom? Yeah. Come on, man. So, uh, yeah, I've seen that as well. But It's not know, like, I mean, anyway. Right. So, so, so uh, you know, finally, finally relinquished my, you know, thought that I didn't want to be in the insurance business. And I'm going to tell you what the game changer was for me, guys. My failures in the construction business, which was not really due to anything other than the market just collapsing, caused me when I got into the business and guys I'm gonna I, you all need to to hear this if you're about to get into the business I want you to hear this and I want you to follow my follow my lead here okay I burned the ships and I've told Bradley this off the record before and I don't know how many people I've told this but I just told myself if I'm gonna do this this is gonna be the last career I ever have and I'm gonna Jedi mind you know what myself into loving this business and I'm going to study like I have never studied in my life and I'm going to read everything I can and I'm going to be I'm going to be a guy that knows more than most people do about what I'm doing you position yourself as an expert well I I, not not to begin with but by golly that's the goal that's right right and and I and I did and I've studied and I and I worked and I made great on the on the insurance exams which I think most people have a tough time with and uh and I was off to the races and so uh that's kind of how I got into the business but a big part of that was was my friend and great American Ricky Sims uh, from Hamilton kind of helping me navigate those waters. And I would literally call him once every two or three months and say, you know, here's my options. Here's where I'm at. What do you think I should do? I'm with State Farm as an associate agent, but, uh, you know, I want to be a principal agent and here are my opportunities. And we, we spent a lot of time together kind of going through all that. So that's kind of my story as to how I got into it. Now, let me fast forward for just a second and say this. I started out as an associate agent with State Farm for about a year and a half. Did not have a lot of mentorship as much as I would have liked to, you know, once I got into it. Um, Wore the Naybear costume on more than one occasion for State (laughs) Farm at events. Felt like an associate agent. Felt like I was less than my principal agent. And you've probably been there too when you've worked with with somebody as a, you know, kind of not a principal agent. I don't know. It, that was a tough time for me. My my W-2, which I have framed at the office my first year with State Farm, guys, I want you to sit down for this because this is so much money that you probably won't be able to, 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 to fathom this. But from April of 08 to December of 08 on my W-2 was something like 
$798. I was rolling in the cash that year. Well, and I mean, and, and by you saying, you know, th- that's not necessarily a bad thing because you have, and you'll learn this the further you're in the industry. I've been in the industry seven years, which is a long time to some people and not mm-hmm. a long time to others, but you have two types of people. You have people who are going to be team members. Mm-hmm. And people who are going to be agents, right? And when you put an agent in a team member position, a lot of times that involves failure or being mm-hmm. miserable. Mm-hmm. And when you put a team member in an agent position, you get the same, right? So that's not necessarily to say that you're in a bad spot. You just were not in the spot for you, exactly. Correct, exactly, exactly. But I knew I was good at what I did, and I knew I wanted to be a principal agent. I just knew it was going to take some time. And the grit, and guys, you'll hear me say this on this podcast a lot, the grit and the determination to continue going and continue pushing forward each and every day until I got to where I wanted to be. I don't care if you're an athlete in high school or on the, the, in the band or you're in a business. I think a lot of most failures, especially academically as well, are contributed to people not having the grit and the determination to just keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep going. And that comes back to finding the right vehicle. Absolutely. You know, I mean, and, and let's get into that. You can be you can be in the right vehicle, but not be in the right position. Right. So, so Bradley, let's talk a little bit about this, and I really want you to hit home on this. So, so guys, we talked about getting a mentor before you before you jump off into this thing and go sign up with X Y Z company. And I'm telling you again, get your ass out there and find somebody to help you make that decision that knows what they're talking about. Once you do that, as part of that, Bradley, I think the next step or kind of the step with that step is you've got to figure out as a person what type of vehicle in the insurance industry that you want to sell. Do you want to sell home and auto insurance? Do you want to sell commercial insurance? Do you want to sell financial services? Do you want to sell health insurance? But guys, here's the problem you're going to have, and Bradley, you need to speak to this too, is it's hard to make that decision when you don't even know what the hell you're going to be selling and you don't really know shit from shampoo about what you're doing. But you're going to have to have the self-awareness to try to figure out, okay, of all of these things and based on what kind of money I want to make, uh, and, I th- and, and what you'll figure out real quick, and I hope we, we're able to touch on it today in this podcast, is you better be figuring out what you want to sell. And if you don't like selling life insurance or financial services, your ass better not be going to New York Life and signing right. up to, 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 you know, with, because New York Life's made you a job offer. Or and, you're going to be miserable every day of your life. And I can add a little bit of context to this. I started in the industry with, with a, a, just a life insurance company. And, and learn to love life insurance. I wasn't in a spot where, where I hated it. I mean, that's still one thing that I really, really like to do. But what I recognized early on, I would say three to three to six months in, when I was there a year, is that property and casualty, along with that life insurance, is where it's at. Not, not only because there's more volume, there's more sales. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't have to buy life insurance per se, but you've got to buy car insurance and home insurance. Right. And and so I recognize, wait a minute, that's Love re- that about our business that, too. Yeah, that's regulated. We we have to people have to buy that. People don't have to buy this. But also because of the volume, you know, you might only write a, a good life insurance salesperson might only write three to five policies a month sometimes. Right. Not saying that's good or bad or whatever, because I know there's MDRT agents doing way more than that. But but a good life insurance agent might only write three to five in a in a Average PNC does 30 policies a month, 50 right. policies a month. Obviously, just, I mean, you can be the worst life insurance salesman in the world. <laughs> and if you're getting 30 new customers in there a month, if you're going to sell some life off of that. Right. So I recognized that real early. So I realized, okay, I need to be in the PNC and the life insurance business. Right. And that's what I did. I went from life insurance. I actually took up took a small pay cut to go to work for a PNC agent as his sort of life auto specialist. Guys, let, let me say this to you, and you need to understand this. So your income, it, it, the, the game in the insurance business is not new business. The game in the insurance business is renewals. Uh, anybody that tells you otherwise is just wrong. I mean, the, the, you know, renewals are where it's at. And, that, and that's the problem, I think, too, 
and, and there's somebody out there that's going to disagree right. with this because there's some company that's not like this, but a lot of the life insurance only companies are set up right. for just new business and that renewal is not there. Right. And so that's the problem with that is you always have to be churning mm-hmm. that new business. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think, you know, the other thing I would add to that is as we progress through 2018 and in the, in the future years out there, home and auto seems to continue to get fragment, fragmented Lots of people, lots of companies, a lot of people like to sell home and auto. I know Bradley loves to sell home and auto along with life and financial services. I don't. I'm a commercial guy. I would rather sell commercial and financial services. I love selling big ticket items. Big ticket items equals more commission, equals more money. Um, you know, if you have dreams of making sixty, seventy, eighty, hundred thousand dollars a year, you can do that selling P and C as far as home and auto and, and life life and financial services and you can even make more money than that. I think Bradley makes, you know, you make a really good living doing what you do. But if you're wanting to make three hundred, four hundred, six hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars a year, you ain't doing that selling renters insurance, guys. <laughs> you ain't doing that selling freaking one car policies through National General. Apps don't pay the bills. That's right. Premium does. Abs- absolutely. And so if if your intentions or the need that you have in the insurance business to sell, you're going to have to, first thing you're going to have to go look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself is, this is going to take a while to build up. It's not, you're not going to just come out of the gate making $100,000, $200,000, dollars a year. And the second thing is, if you're a big ticket guy, you're a guy or girl that needs to make a lot of money. You, you're probably going to be looking at doing something either in the commercial insurance world and, you know, mid to large size accounts or uh, the financial services sector, both of which are going to take some time. You know, you just can't jump into it and in two weeks be making one hundred and fifty dollars or $200,000 a year. Uh, I've been doing this now. This is going on my 10th year, which seems like it was yesterday. And as I tell people, time is a freaking freight train and it never stops. The days it, are short. The days are long, and the years are short. That's right. And and it seems like yesterday I was getting started in the business. Bradley's been in it for seven years, so combined we have about seventeen years of experience. I've been with State Farm. I've worked in some of the most successful agency offices in the world. I've seen the best. I've seen the worst. I, the one area that I think I can lean on with, or that I have to lean on with you, is I've never worked in a financial services. Uh, agency like a you know Northwestern Mutual, and or, I get anxiety when I have to deal with commercial. And and Bradley Bradley is uh, unlike me, and in, in that he doesn't like commercial insurance. So I think I think we are a good couple in that regard, as far as the podcast goes, uh, because we do both have a little bit different you know cup of tea sort of thing there. Um, so so that's kind of where we are now. I th- I think the last thing I want to hit on guys before we let you go today. And we'll come back next week with episode two. But the last thing I want to tell you about, you know, how we got in the insurance business and some things that, and of course I want Bradley to talk about how he got in the business, but we need to talk about what if you've got an opportunity, Bradley, but the company that's wanting you to come on board has a significant cash outlay that they want you to put in or a penalty if you leave. (laughs) personally would stay away right but i know there's and a you lo- know who the companies i'm talking about. i know the companies you're talking about and i don't think there's anything wrong with anyone taking that offer i don't think there's anything wrong with those guys offering that because i think a lot for a lot of folks i mean that's their only option right and if you want to be in the business bad enough then then hey you know that's go for but i would i would try to to not do that you know i, I read a quote from mark cuban and that's not to down any carrier or anything no, 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 you know no. that's not that's just I mean, it's really that's our personal opinion, but I think it would be the the opinion of of the masses, sort of. But um, you know, Mark Cuban has a quote that the stupidest thing you can do is take a loan to start a business, mm-hmm. um, and and I think that that sort of rings true. Absolutely. But but I would just I would just tr- I would try to find a company that somewhat aligns with your moral compass, right? And, and try to you know, I'm very very lucky to be. I, I like out of the box marketing mm-hmm. and I like pushing the envelope not to a not to a point to where it's controversial but I just like doing things out of the box and sort of being the first there and the first doing that and 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 I'm lucky enough to be with a company that that sort of allows me that 
creative space to color outside of the box. And I found that by accident. I didn't, right. I didn't, right. it just, that just, sometimes could, that's life. You find things yeah, by accident. And, and honestly, I was not into that before I got to where I'm at now. Right. I sort of, I, one thing that I'll do is, is I look for the white space. Right. And, and I like to advertise in areas that my competition's not. And so one thing I, I realized pretty early on is, hey, wait, my competition is, if they're doing social media, they suck at it. Right. If, or they're not doing it at all. And, and the company pretty much lets us, within reason, mm-hmm. kind of brand ourselves right. on there. And hell, let's go to town. Like right, let's do right, that. You know, right. if if my competition wasn't using billboards, I'd do billboards right. theoretically. Right. Um. And and you know, it's it's just you just have to to recognize that. Mm-hmm. And luckily, I just sort of and I and I understand that I'm very lucky that I fell into that. Mm-hmm. What I, I like to do, every you know, the stars aligned. Mm-hmm. But I think you need to find what what's going to make you the happiest mm-hmm. because I'm going to be honest with you. I, I love insurance. I'm one of the few people that thinks that insurance can be sexy, mm-hmm. but there's some companies out there that if I had to work for them and that was the only option, you'd do something else. I, I would. Yeah. Right. I would not, I would be doing marketing or, right. or something, you right. know, I would not, I would not be doing what I'm doing. So, so I, it, finding that right vehicle is so, so important. Right. It's, it's probably the most important thing. Well, and I'm going to say this, guys. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Write this shit down, okay? So, a couple things. If you're going to sign on with a national carrier, if you're going to sign on to the to a, with a national carrier or sign on with a uh, financial services organization and they're, they're sticking a contract in your face, you better read the fine print. Because if you sign on with some, especially na- especially financial services companies, and I'm not going to name any names, but but you know who you are, and and you spend two or three years with them, let's say you spend two years with them, and one day you eat a bad piece of pizza and decide you don't want to do this anymore, well, the small print on page 27 of that contract says that you owe them all of the training costs that were associated with training you, and that will be uh, totaled up to fifty or seventy-five thousand dollars. Now, here's Seen that happen uh, several times, occasions, multiple yes. times, mu- with multiple companies, multiple companies. Mm-hmm. Guys, I'm telling you, if you didn't, if you already didn't have a pot to piss in before you started, what makes you think you're going to have fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars at the end of this when you're leaving? Because obviously, you're not successful, and now you get a demand letter from an attorney. Uh, in such and such city, saying that you owe this company seventy five, fifty, seventy five thousand dollars. I also know some personal lines, what I would consider personal lines, uh, exclusive agency type positions, where kind of the same thing holds true. If you leave after one year, you owe us X number of dollars, and I would have a really hard time committing to something like that unless I was flush enough from a cash position. That if that happened, it really wouldn't be a big deal to me, or I had a rich uncle or mom or dad and, that could bail me out. And that goes back to, you know, <clears throat> you need to know your non competes. Absolutely. Um, and one thing that I tell people in any business, not just in insurance, is you need to brand Scott Howell, right? Not whatever company you right. represent, whether right. it's a construction company, and and there's no company that would agree with that right. obviously right. but but you need to brand you you mm-hmm. don't need to brand anything else now it's okay you know scott and i both work for or represent very well respected companies and we both use the names of those companies to get leverage but mm-hmm. at the end of the day i mean you are you're branding scott howell and you're branding bradley flowers absolutely and i can't tell you how many people out there know bradley flowers is insurance but don't know what company i work for right. and that is no disrespect whatsoever to the company, but it's just me positioning myself as the expert. You, you should be very proud of that. I am. I you am. You should be very proud of I that. I am. Um, but, because, but it, because in the insurance business, personal branding is the game. And, and we're going to get into that in some upcoming episodes. Every business personal branding is Absolutely. the brand, brand is how you leverage yourself for the long term. Absolutely. If you're, I mean, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk said the other day, if BMW made a, made a, a shaving razor, Mm-hmm. Everybody would buy it, right? It's right. you know you you leverage that brand, and in in that same talk, he was talking to car dealers, mm-hmm. and there, but for them, they're the brand, mm-hmm. not Mercedes, right? 
because right. guess what? There's not many companies out there that are not going to be replaced by technology one day or be replaced. Yeah, and you right. need to be able to live on. And what happens when when businesses and industries get squeezed by this technology? The A and B players mm-hmm. are the ones that make it. The C and D players get eaten up, and Absolutely. the A and B players absorb that. Absolutely. And I, let me let me say this, guys. Back to the personal branding stuff. You know, the the game has changed so much in the last 24 months, or really the last five years that it's so easy for 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 us to to brand ourselves on social media and so important to do that it levels the playing field some for us uh guys i'm here to tell you right now uh if you are going to get in this business uh you better get ready to brand yourself on part on, on uh you know using using social media and, and if you're scared to do that or afraid to do that there was one thing I can promise everybody watching this right now. If people don't know who you are, if people don't know who you are, I can promise you they are not going to do business with you. And the one thing, and I think Bradley will agree with this, and when I finish this, I want you to get into how you got into the insurance business because I want to talk about that before we get off the podcast. Sounds good. There, there, there's, there's, there, there's one thing that hurts my heart more than anything else that happens, more than a cancellation, more than more than anything else. When I run into a friend of mine somewhere or somebody that I know, I'm telling you, this, this to me is like your Google review I yesterday. know what you're going to say. When we talked about Google reviews yesterday, you know, you were talking about how other than a policyholder dying or having, a, you know, business-wise. Sure. I business-wise. Mean, obviously, obviously. The worst thing that can happen to me is a negative Google review. There's not any other thing business-wise. There's no client that could cancel besides maybe a big policy that was written the day before, and that's not going to happen. Right. Um, if you do it the right way, it's not going to happen. Um, it Google review. But anyway, At, continue. Yeah. This is my Google review. This is Bradley's Google review. Worst thing that happens to me, if you want to put me in a bad mood, guys, have a friend or family member or somebody that I feel close to, or hell, for that matter, somebody that I'm just an acquaintance with, walk up to me in the grocery store, the gym, the car lot, the car line, whatever it may be, and go, oh, man, Scott, I, you know, I just changed homeowner's insurance last week. I forgot all about you selling insurance. That is like nails on a freaking chalkboard to me. I want to flip tables over. I want to cuss people out. I, I, and you know why? It's not that I'm mad at them. Because it's not them, it's me. You know, I'm apologizing. You know, I should be apologizing for them, for them not knowing that I sell freaking insurance. And, and that, that guys, I'm telling you, if you're going to get in the insurance business, you better get ready to get in the personal branding business. That shit's happening. And if it doesn't happen, you will be going to work at another job. Period. End of sentence. All right, talk about getting in the business. So, my story... Uh a little bit different. Um, I I, uh, I grew up uh, a golfer, and and this story is a little bit different every time I tell it because it, it really could be a long story, and I just sort of pick and choose what I want to tell. <laughs> but um, I was a golfer, and and growing up, the guys who played the most golf were always insurance agents. Mm-hmm. And and of course, after being in the business, I've learned that that's not the right way to do it. And mm-hmm. and those guys, uh, while probably successful are not mentors of mine, but that, that just sort of got my attention. So to be completely honest with you, besides playing on the PGA Tour, I am one of the few people that can say I wanted to be an insurance agent when I was 16 years old. Wow. Um, That's awesome. A, along with play, you know, playing the, ins- uh, you know, along with playing professional golf. That right, obviously right. Yeah, everybody's got that, you know. But um, you don't you don't think Chris Paradiso is playing maybe eight hours ago? No, that's not happening. <laughs> uh, no, nobody, nobody this successful. No, that's not. And and now honestly, I play golf. I played golf with uh, a friend of mine, men, a mentor of mine, a month or so ago, mm. and uh, at a really exclusive golf course that people like me don't get to go to much. And uh, he asked me when the last time I played was, and I said uh, last year when we were here. Right. And, and I just don't play. But anyway. That, that sort of got my interest, and I uh, went to college, played uh, college golf and at Faulkner State Community College. Yep. And uh, same well. place Bubba Watson yeah. actually played there, um, same coach. 
different years. I was going to say, what year, was he before or after you? He was in, I think, 2004-ish. I was 2007. Okay. I, think, I think it may be further apart than that. It actually is further apart than that. But um, but anyway, played there. Uh, went, ended up going to University of South Alabama here in Mobile. And while I was at South, I was going for a teaching degree. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, because teachers were off in the summers and could play golf. Sweet. That's how everything, you know. And so I ended up, I was actually... M- Sort of not really managing, but sort of working at a uh, sort of managing a, a cell phone store. Southern Link. Rem- remember that, guys. I'm going to bring that up later. Southern Link Beep Beep Radios, which yep. is the same thing as uh, as Nextel. Right. If you remember right. Nextel, I think they yep. were national. Terrible product. Terrible product. Um, very well run operation by the the person who owned the company, but terrible product. And and we sold a lot of cell phones. And I was sort of in close to a farming community. It was not podunk or anything like that, but it was a farming community. And so it was a lot of farmers, and they liked that Beep Beep Radio. And so uh, we – we uh, radio. Beep Beep Radio, man. We sold those, and a buddy of mine was working for a life insurance company, and he had made uh, about sixty grand in six months, and that got my attention. And he, and he was playing golf every day. But he, he – uh, I was going to say he was not doing it the right way, but um, – so he got my that got my attention. He said, "Man, if you can sell this crap, you can sell insurance." Right. And I quit that day and went to work doing that part time while I was going to school at South. How'd, and, you, how'd you do with it? Um, I did really well. I, I called on really early. You know, yeah. I started small, and they basically showed me two products. They showed me a uh, whole life insurance policy and a cancer policy, mm. and taught me how to sell those. And I had one or two. Same way I sort of coach my people now. Is if they say this, you say this. If they say this, you say this. That's it. It just you just sort of branch out. You know, it, mm-hmm. it you, you break the sales process down so much that it becomes predictable. And so uh, they sort of taught me how to how to sell those two particular products. And I got really good at it. Uh, working with them, they would go on appointments with me. I still remember to this day. Remember the lady's name. The first appointment I went to on my own, I asked her a few questions. It went exactly as planned. And I sold something. And I was so excited. Still, probably my favorite sale I've ever made, or one of the favorite. It was a, I think eighteen dollar a month cancer policy. And I was like, holy crap! But that company also paid advance commission. So an eighteen dollar a month policy, mm-hmm. you made a lot of money. And they actually paid it, I think, the next day. Wow. So, which would kill you on chargebacks. But right. um, but anyway, did that, and I, I made, and I'll just be straight up with everybody, I made $50,000, I think, roughly, maybe just shy of that. Um, yeah, it was definitely, sh- it wasn't quite 50, but it was close. And in a year, and I was going to school to be a teacher and was going to make 32. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here thinking, and I was sitting in class, and I just, I'm one of these guys, I loathed school. Oh, I, I hated school. I, I hated school. And now all I do is freaking read and try to learn, which right, is crazy. Right, it's when right. you find a subject, but right. but that's that's another point. I hated school. I had teachers. You know, uh, I was in high school, and uh, I'm actually going to tell Gary Vaynerchuk this story one day. I picked entrepreneurship as a research paper title, and the teacher told me that was stupid. Mm. Mm. And I picked something else. Could you imagine that happening now, that would be like, right. oh, that's so awesome. I mean, because yeah. that's the, you know, and so, Absolutely. and it was like that keeping me down, you know, right, right, and I, right. obviously, I mean, I could hyperbolize that. It wasn't that big of a deal, yeah. but it may have been. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, you're right. Now entrepreneurship is the new buzzword. Right. Right. And everybody's an entrepreneur. Right. You know, people selling right supplements <laughs> and it, uh, on Instagram. It works. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, it, I made, you know, I, I quit and mentally I was sitting in class and I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I going to school for this? Mm-hmm. You know, and I wasn't, I was, I was close to being done, but I wasn't mm-hmm. close enough that mm-hmm. I could, I could have mentally done it. So right. I dropped out right then. And my biggest regret to this day is not dropping out. My biggest regret is starting to go to school. Mm. I wish I'd have gotten insurance earlier. Right. I'd be that, but right. obviously ifs, ifs and buts, you right. know, it's, but, um, work for, work for that company for right at a year. That was right still around the time that I recognized that I needed to be in the PNC industry. Uh, took a pay cut mm-hmm. to go to work for a PNC agent to learn. Probably one of the best PNC agents around. Uh, went, you know, learned a lot. Uh, learned a lot of what not to do, too. Mm-hmm. Um, was there about a year. And what I really like to do, I mean, don't get me wrong, I wanted to be in the PNC industry, but what I really like to do is sell life insurance. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
every company out there tells you they want you to sell. Every PNC company says we want you to sell life insurance. To be honest, there's very few that actually mean it. Right. And I actually found a company that I represent now that that means it. And mm-hmm. so we, uh, uh, about six months into to that deal, I, I started looking at a few few different options. And in, in that a year, I had found where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And I actually looked at an agency in Auburn, Alabama. I was going to move up there. Uh, War Eagle, if anybody's listening, <laughs> and uh, and an opportunity came open. Uh, my parents actually, and I don't think I've ever told you this story. Um, I was I, I, the Auburn thing fell through, and I was about to go to work for another. Now, now, the, the Auburn office or opportunity was, was Alpha. Was that was mm-hmm. with Alpha? I was okay. Alpha, okay. and that that kind of fell through. And I was still kind of talking to some Alpha people, and right. and and I know people that are listening to this nationally are not familiar with Alpha. It's basically Alabama's version of Farm Bureau. If you're mm-hmm. familiar with Farm Bureau, it's different, but that's we don't have Farm Bureau here. And so basically, uh, I had given up on it because Alpha, we, we really don't put our openings out there. You have to kind of hear about mm-hmm. it word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And that's how I heard about the Auburn deal. And my parents, actually, I was about to go to work with my manager at the first company at another company. And uh, my parents had a water leak in their hot water heater one day. Mm. And it was like a Saturday. And I was over there helping them out. And the adjuster came by and the adjuster was an Alpha adjuster. And And he did his thing and he left and he came back and he said, I forgot to take pictures. I've been an adjuster 25 years. I've never forgotten to take pictures. And he's taking pictures. And while he's taking pictures, he says, which one of y'all is in the insurance business? I said, that's me. And he said, I said, actually, I'm trying to get on with Alpha. And he said, man, we got an opening 15 minutes from here for an agent position. And I'm like, really? Next day. Gave me the number of the person to contact. One thing led to the other. Oh, I ended up not taking that one. I ended up being in Sarah Land, which at one time, Sarah Land was the fastest growing small town in America mm-hmm. and, and still is you know doing very well. Um, so uh, had that guy not forgotten to take pictures, I'd probably still be doing something else now. Wow. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been good. And, and my, my original manager at the first company, who actually works for Alpha now uh-huh. and is a peer of mine, uh-huh. not a superior, Back then, told me, he said, uh, if you will work as hard on your insurance and your business as you do on your golf game, there's no telling how much money you could make and how successful you could be. And finally, one day that clicked. Yeah. I was able to set the golf aside and I completely just fell in love with business and right. learning about business right. and insurance. And that's what I tell my brother is a barber. He runs a barber shop. And, I, and I, I've told him, and he, he, you know, he cuts. 20 something 25 heads of hair a day and mm-hmm. he comes home and he's just beat and and you know i went to see him the other day for a haircut and he had a two hour wait which is crazy for a barber mm-hmm. he's the only barber in town i said man you just got to learn you got to learn to love it just mm-hmm. find attach yourself to something and really for me what i love is not the insurance part it's the marketing mm-hmm. i'm a i'm a marketer that sit, mm-hmm. just happens to sell insurance absolutely and, and that's, that's really what I love. Right. And what makes me love insurance is it's a space where people are behind. Mm-hmm. The industry's behind. Mm-hmm. Agents are behind. There's, mm-hmm. I can name, and this is not to say I'm doing it right. There, I can name every agent that's doing social media really, really good. I can probably name them on one hand. Right. It's very, it's just people aren't doing it right. Because it's such a hard product to market. Right. And, and we'll, you know, we'll allude to that and help people with that because I think you and I both do some really cool things. And I know I don't do everything the right way. And I know you don't either. But I think, I mean, I get more business from social media and marketing than anything else. And I, and I know you do too. So, Absolutely. but that's sort of my story. I sort of, you know, had a lot of serendipity. Right, right. A lot right. of luck. A lot of, lot of things went the right way. And I understand that I'm extremely lucky for that. And a lot of people don't get that. I, I would agree with that 100%. Um, the more I'm alive, the longer I'm alive, the more I realize a lot of things may be timing. You know, a lot of things may be a God thing. You know, timing for me was, was, was important and the way things kind of opened up and shook out. But, you know, guys, I think, uh, I think after hearing our stories, I, I want to go ahead and close this particular podcast out today. I'm going to say this. Episode two, we're going to talk about now you're in the insurance business. You, you've passed your test. You've gotten a mentor. You've decided which company, which agency is going to be best for you. You've picked a vehicle, the, the right vehicle. You've had the self-awareness to pick the right vehicle for you. Now what? What in the hell are we going to do now? Well, now somebody's got to go sell some damn insurance because that, that in and of itself, you can, you can pontificate and talk and, 
and social media and do all this stuff. But some somewhere down the line, somebody's got to go get the check. And and I mean this humbly. Right. You need to listen to this podcast. We are going to give some great straight up advice. Absolutely. And no BS. Um, like I said, neither one of us have anything to sell, but you need to subscribe to this podcast. As of the recording of this, we are the only insurance podcast on Spotify. And if you are any kind of tech guru junkie, you know what that means. Yeah, that's a big deal. I'll say this. I've seen some insurance podcasts. I saw somebody post the other day about the top 10 insurance podcasts, and I went and listened to a few of them. And I don't think as an agency owner or producer or CSR that there will be a better podcast out there. And I know this is a this is a big, bold statement, but I don't think there will be a better podcast in the world for insurance agents than the one that we're putting out right now. And there's some good ones out there. Absolutely. To be completely honest with you, the three that I the three others that I listened to weren't right. on that list, so I think it's complete BS, right, that right, list. Right. I think it's it was corporately pushed, paid, right. you know, but, uh, but absolutely, 100%. And that's no disrespect to these other guys absolutely whatsoever not. because no. we all, we're all in this together and we can all learn from each other. Absolutely. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to shut this one down. This, this has been Episode 1 of the Insurance Guys podcast. My name is Scott Howell, agency owner and insurance evangelist for iProtect Insurance in Huntsville, Alabama. I've been joined by my fearless co-host, Mr. Bradley Flowers. Guys, Listen, we can sit here and do all the talking we want to. Get your ass out of that office. Get out there and go sell something. You cannot sit behind a desk and aggressively wait for the phone to ring. you got to get out there and get after it. And remember, rewards come from action, not discussion. We, we'll see you guys next time on this episode two of the Insurance Guys podcast. Bradley, have a great week, my brother. Thanks, Scott. See you. Thanks for listening to the Insurance Guys podcast. If you need to know more about me or you need to get in touch with Scott, you can always reach me at theinsuranceguyonline.com or email me at iprotectins at gmail.com. And if you need to get in touch with Mr. Bradley Flowers, go to bradleyflowersinsurance.com or email him at bradley at sarahlandinsurance.com. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to being with you again real soon on the next episode of the Insurance Guys. Take care.